Hi, Terry Shaney Feld for UAB School of Medicine. In this video I'd like to discuss hazard ratios. I'll go over when they're used and how you interpret them. At this video is really intended for beginners. It's not intended for statisticians. I'm not going to discuss fancy formulas of how to calculate hazard ratios. It's really going to be about interpreting them. So what is a hazard ratio? Well, hazard ratio is an outcome measure used in time to event analysis, also called survival analysis. So what that means is that as a researcher we're interested in from when somebody's enrolled in a study, the time to which an event occurs or how long it takes for an event to occur, that becomes important. So it might be disease-free survival or time to relapse in a cancer study. That's in contrast to um, a relative risk, which we'll approach again a little bit later in this video. Um, in which we're not really worried about the timing of events, we just care about the total number of events at the end. So that's going to be a, a distinction that we make uh, by the end of this video, um, hazard ratios from relative risk. But remember, hazard ratio is used in survival analysis. And a hazard ratio is just that, it's a ratio of hazards. So it's the hazard in the treatment arm divided by the hazard in the control arm. So what is a hazard? Well, a hazard is an instantaneous event rate. Well, what does that mean? It means that the probability that an individual at a small period of time, we'll call T, has an event at that particular time. And it assumes that the person has survived to this point without having any events. So an instantaneous event rate is a probability that an individual at any given time is going to have an event. So how do we interpret hazard ratios? Well, because it's a ratio, if the hazard ratio is 1, it means event rates are the same in both um, arms at any given particular time. A hazard ratio of 2 means at any particular time, twice as many patients in the treatment group are having an event proportionally to the comparator group. And a hazard ratio of 0.5 means at any particular time, half as many patients in the treatment group are experiencing an event proportionally to the comparator group. Now often hazard ratios are interpreted like a relative risk. And I guess if that helps you think about them um, in some understandable way, I guess that's okay, but it's not technically the same. I mentioned it already earlier why it's not so, and I'm going to show you in a minute another reason why it's not so. Now this is a results figure of the primary outcome of the ASCOT LLA trial. Um, the primary outcome was non-fatal MI or fatal cardiovascular disease, so that's what's being plotted over here over time. In this particular study, patients were randomized to atorvastatin or to placebo. And what we see down here is there is a time across the bottom from when people were enrolled in the study, they began being followed, and the study ended at about three and a half years. And as people accrued events or had events, they were sort of plotted along here. So this dark line is the atorvastatin line. This dotted line is the placebo line. As you can see, as time goes, um, less people are event-free. Uh, so this number goes down. Now this um, reference down here is a nice website to help you understand how to interpret survival curves. Um, I recommend looking at it um, to better understand them because it's a really good and basic um, explanation of this. So here's the hazard ratio that was calculated from a Cox proportional hazards model um, for the ASCOT LLA trial. And you can see the hazard ratio is 0.64. So pause the video for a second. Think about what that means and then we'll talk about how you interpret that number. So what did you get? Well what this means is that people in the atorvastatin group at any individual time along here are 36 percent less likely to experience an event than the people in the placebo group. So it talks about at any particular time along this course of follow-up. Now in contrast the relative risk really doesn't care uh, about everything going on along here, it just really cares at the end. So relative risk reduction would, would be more concerned with total number of events at the end of the study, whereas a hazard ratio really is talking about all these little time periods of follow-up all along here what is the ratio of events in the atorvastatin group compared to the placebo group. So a subtle difference, but an important one nonetheless. I hope this video has helped you understand how to interpret hazard ratios. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.